Hi, my name is Sam van der Steen, and I'm delighted to introduce you to the research of me and my fellow PhD candidates. This work was performed by members of Ghent University in Belgium and Uppsala University in Sweden. It was sponsored by the IWT and ADAPT project. The goal of this work is to offer processor architects an alternative to detailed simulation in the form of analytical modeling. Question is, why do we want to offer an alternative to simulation? To answer that question, we go back in time about 10 years. Around 2005, we hit a barrier where processor frequency didn't scale with shrinking transistors anymore. This was known as the end of Denort scaling and meant it was impossible to keep gaining performance. One general consensus was that we could still gain performance by specializing processors and, for example, dimensioning the processor structures for specific sets of applications. However, designing application-specific processors generally requires exploring a large design space. Simulating such a design space would be extremely slow and using reduction techniques for either the applications or the design space might lead to missing optimal designs. The solution we propose for this is the use of analytical models. These models are multiple orders of magnitude faster than simulation and result only in a minor loss of accuracy. Thus we developed a framework for estimating performance and power through analytical models. Our first tool, a pin-based profiler, will build application profiles which are completely independent of the microarchitecture. It will build profiles for the instruction mix, memory and branch behavior. For more detail on how these profiles look like, I would happily refer you to the paper. The analyzer is a collection of mathematical models which will use these profiles together with parameters of the microarchitecture. It will generate performance and power numbers for a fixed application and processor architecture. The biggest advantage is that the profiler needs to be run only once per application and typically achieves a processing speed of 2 million instructions per second. The analysis phase can then be rerun for every processor configuration, but usually takes less than a minute. This makes it possible to evaluate large design spaces in very little time. So, what does the analytical model look like? The first order approximation is that when there are no disruptive mis-events such as a branch miss prediction, an i-cache miss or a long d-cache miss, the processor can sustain an effective performance or IPC equal to the physical dispatch width. However, we found that this was not the case for x86 based processors. Due to structural hazards in the issue stage of the processor, the performance is throttled. We modeled this as an effective dispatch rate which is lower than the physical dispatch width. All of this results in a formula which calculates the number of cycles it takes to execute an application. We first calculate the execution time without blocking events, but with throttled performance using the effective dispatch rate. Next, we add all blocking events, branch mispredictions multiplied by their resolve time, instruction cache misses and long latency DRAM accesses by their fetch time. The latter is also divided by the memory level parallelism because multiple misses can be processed in parallel by the DRAM. The last term calculates a penalty for chained last level cache hits. For a more detailed discussion about all these components, I would again like to refer you to the paper. Now, let's get to the fun part, the results and a short demo. One of the exciting applications of our model is the ease by which one can search a design space for Pareto optimal processor architectures, which are designs for which it's impossible to find a better configuration given the same constraints. I'll show Pareto plots for two benchmarks, Calculix and Gromax. For those who can't get enough of Pareto plots, we published two online appendages together with a paper where we further detailed the accuracy for the Pareto plots and introduced phase plots for all spec CPU 2006 benchmarks. The Pareto plot you see now is the one for the Calculix benchmark and our model clearly predicts the performance and power for this benchmark very well over the complete design space. The green curve is the Pareto front built up with the model predictions and the blue curve is the one built up using cycle level accurate simulation. The red dots are the designs which the analytical models predict to be Pareto optimal, but plotted with the performance and power taken from detailed simulation. The red points show that we correctly predict the designs that are Pareto optimal or close to Pareto optimal. The next Pareto plot is for the Gromax benchmark. Here we immediately see that the green and blue curve are far apart. This is due to the absolute error on the model predictions. However, if we look at the red points, we can confirm that the designs we predict to be Pareto optimal are indeed Pareto optimal. This shows the most important feature of our model, its relative accuracy. It shows that despite the absolute error for some benchmarks, it can track performance and power changes of different processor architectures correctly. Because I know it's hard to form an image of just how fast analytical models can be compared to simulation, I'll show a short demo. 
On the left we show the profiler and analyzer calculating the model for a couple of processor architectures. Remember that the profiler needs to be run only once. On the right we show simulating the same processor architectures with Sniper, a fast cycle level accurate simulator. At the bottom we will show CPI stacks built up by the model and simulation when the results for that architecture are known. It's immediately clear that the simulation is a lot slower. We even have to fast forward the demo. The analytical model produces its results in about 1400 seconds, while the simulations take 39600 seconds. Thank you for watching this short video and I hope it sparked your interest in reading our paper.